Hello and welcome, I'm Ankit Tateja and you are watching Tech It Out. This week we tell you about spy satellites that Elon Musk's SpaceX is building for a US intelligence agency. We explain how healthy lab-grown beef rice could be and find out about new mobile phone innovations. Let's get started. Elon Musk's SpaceX is deepening its ties with US intelligence and military agencies. It is even developing espionage technology for American intelligence. We get you more details about this secret project in this report. SpaceX is at the forefront of a secret US project. According to sources familiar with the program, it is constructing a network of spy satellites with a US intelligence agency. SpaceX's StarShield business unit is developing this network in partnership with the National Reconnaissance Office, also known as NRO. It's said to be a $1.8 billion contract that was signed in 2021. The NRO is a part of the US intelligence community. It operates spy satellites and shares satellite data with various government agencies. You should also know that the StarShield network differs from SpaceX's commercial broadband constellation Starlink, which serves various consumers, companies and governmental agencies. The classified constellation of spy satellites represents a critical asset for the US government. It offers unparalleled surveillance capabilities worldwide. According to reports, this network aims to eliminate blind spots and can provide continuous coverage of the Earth's activities. This collaboration highlights SpaceX's increasing involvement in America's national security projects. If successful, this program is poised to significantly enhance the US government and military's ability to swiftly identify potential targets across the globe. While details of the program remain classified, a Reuters report reveals that SpaceX's contract includes the making of a powerful spy system containing hundreds of Earth imaging satellites. The satellites can track ground targets and provide real-time data to U.S. intelligence and military officials. The contract signifies a growing confidence in SpaceX by the U.S. intelligence unit, even though Musk has clashed with the Biden administration. There have been other controversies too. Media reports have highlighted that Musk's manufacturing operations, including at SpaceX, have harmed consumers and workers. Also, let's not forget that the Pentagon is already a big SpaceX customer. It uses its Falcon 9 rockets to launch military payloads into space. Musk's Star Shield project reflects the escalating competition between the US and its rivals. Nations like China and Russia are fighting to become dominant military powers in space. US fears that they could be capable of disabling entire satellite networks. Therefore, Star Shield aims to be more resilient to attacks from sophisticated space powers. What's more interesting to note here is that amid all this, SpaceX has grown from a small startup into a major national security contractor. There is a strong push for electric vehicles in India. Many automakers are working hard to revolutionize the EV sector in the country. Watch this report for more details. Electric models made up about 2% of total car sales in India last year. The government wants to increase that to 30% by 2030. To achieve the target, India has decided to cut import taxes on electric vehicles. This will be applicable for EVs produced by car makers that commit to invest at least $500 million and start domestic manufacturing within three years. This will lead to increased competition for domestic automakers from companies like Tesla and Vinfast. But it seems Indian automakers have a plan to compete in the EV market.
Tata Motors, which commands more than 80% of India's electric car market, currently sells four EV models. The company plans to have 10 electric models in its portfolio over the next three to four years. EVs will make up 25% of its total car sales by 2025, compared to 9.3% last year. Mahindra, which sells an electric version of its XUV400 SUV, plans to push ahead with new electric SUV launches from 2025. The company is expecting electric models to make up 20 to 30 percent of its SUV sales by March 2027. The Indian unit of South Korea's Hyundai Motors currently sells two EV models, the Kona and Ionic 5. The company now plans to introduce five EV cars by 2032. It will also grow the number of its charging stations to 439 by 2027. Hyundai is planning to invest close to $4 billion in the Indian market over the next decade. This includes the launch of new EVs, charging stations and a battery pack assembly unit. Maruti Suzuki India, the country's top automaker by sales, plans to have six EV models by 2030. Japan Suzuki Motors, which holds a majority stake in the company, says the group's first EV will be rolled out from Maruti's plant in the state of Gujarat by the end of 2024. Indian steel-to-power conglomerate JSW Group is a new entrant in the EV category. It will set up electric vehicle and battery manufacturing projects worth $4.82 billion in the eastern state of Odisha. According to media reports, the group is also in talks with German automaker Volkswagen about supplying technology and components for its EV project. Xiaomi is aiming to capture a significant market share in the competitive premium smartphone market in India. Its new flagship smartphones, Xiaomi 14 and 14 Ultra, promise a lot of high-end features. Xiaomi India's Chief Marketing Officer Anuj Sharma tells us more about the new phones in this story. Xiaomi has been a leading player in India's smartphone market. The company is now all set to strengthen its position in the premium smartphone market with the launch of Xiaomi 14 and 14 Ultra. Xiaomi 14 is more than just a smartphone. It's actually three iconic companies coming together to create something that we've not seen before. So if I put it as, you know, Xiaomi obviously is one part of it, but you've got Qualcomm and you've got Leica. So with Qualcomm, you're getting the best chipset that you can get, the best performance you can get, the best fluidity that you can get on a smartphone today. But with Leica, you're getting something that you've not seen on a smartphone till date. One of the most important things in a flagship phone is its design and build quality. Interestingly, the new Xiaomi phones are aesthetically designed and offer a comfortable grip. Uh, so Xiaomi 14 actually is uh, all glass and aluminium. So metal in the middle, glass at the back, glass in the front. Now the glass is a Corning's Gorilla Glass Victus. So it's drop and scratch resistant. Uh, but Xiaomi 14 Ultra, in this we've actually innovated a new glass altogether. Uh, we're calling it Xiaomi Shield. So it's 10 times more uh, stronger than any other glass that we've seen on a phone till date. From a display perspective, both of them are fantastic displays in their own right. Uh, they are bright, they're more than 3000 nits. Obviously, it's really good for outdoor viewing. Their cameras are engineered with Leica, which is a premium photography brand. But how good is the experience? Xiaomi 14 is for, you know, all of us who like to take great pictures. Now the 14 actually has three cameras. Uh, all three are 50 megapixels. And these are large sensors that can capture a lot more light. The Ultra is meant for professional photographers, it's meant for people who are wanting to take their photography game to the next level. So this actually has four lenses, all of them again are 50 megapixel and I think this probably is one of the first few phones which has optical stabilization on three of the lenses. Now comes the most important question, how is the overall performance? Does it deliver as much as it promises? Both the phones come with the most powerful processor that you can get. 
which is the Qualcomm Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. So it's the latest that you can get. It's the most powerful chipset that you can find. Now the Xiaomi 14 comes with 12 GB of RAM. With the Ultra, you get 16 GB of RAM. Both of them have 512 GB of storage because you will take so many photos, you will take so many videos. Both of them have been engineered to give you at least more than a day. The mobile industry is becoming increasingly competitive. Companies are innovating to gain a strong foothold in the phone market. Their focus is on redefining the smartphone experience. Samsung is one such company that is trying to make the most of emerging tech trends. Aditya Babbar, who is the Vice President of Mobile Experiences Business at Samsung India, shares the details with us. Smartphone makers are betting big on foldable phones. But there is one company that is cementing its lead in the foldable smartphone market. We are talking about Samsung, which is expected to soon launch its next generation of foldable devices. We have been the pioneer of foldable smartphone. And over the years, we have very carefully crafted the consumer experience. Whether it is about the large screen experience or, you know, building a all new hinge which can support the water resistance or bringing the S Pen into the foldable. The core of it is defined with the consumer need experience building. Hey, I'm at gate six wearing a gray shirt. I'm at gate six wearing a gray shirt. I'll pick you up in two minutes. Along with foldable phones, Samsung has its focus on another key tech trend, artificial intelligence. The phone maker is integrating AI into its devices for enhanced functionality. We will continue to democratize the tech for the consumers uh, as the evolution goes on. I will go to the core principle of our innovation, which I started with, a meaningful innovation. And I will bring on that how we have built our generative AI and a Galaxy AI around that. If you today see a circle to search feature, the way it has been built on, you need a thing. Then you go out of the browsing, you go to a search bar and then you type. Today, you can circle it, get it there and then. Imagine you and me traveling out and you know we want to converse with people. But the reality is language is a barrier. You know, how we have created a live translate where somebody can talk in Hindi and other can talk in Spanish and still can communicate in their core language, which they are very comfortable. Third, talking about meaningful innovations, you know, minutes of the meeting, you know, have been there for ages. But it is very, very difficult for somebody to spend three, four hours writing, documenting this. Now here is a solution on one click. It generates minutes of the meeting. While Samsung continues to innovate its top-of-the-line products, but how is the company planning to outdo competition in other price segments? It is about getting the right product. Consumer wants a flagship-like feature. So we have very carefully crafted uh, what I was talking sometime back about democratization. We have crafted a new series, A35 and A55, on a 3D strategy. We call it democratization of feature. Today you get a design which is flagship-like, which is inspired by flagship. You have a metal and glass, you have a brush metal around the sides, you have a floating camera design. You have durability like flagship, which is IP67, Gorilla Glass Victus Plus, which is, was available on flagship. You have flagship nitrography camera, which helps you to shoot the best in the dark. You have security like Samsung Vault built-in, which helps you to share content privately auto block what you want and lastly you know a flagship experience like which is four os upgrade and five years of security it will be interesting to see how the south korean tech giant continues to innovate and adapt to stay ahead of the curve i have a question for you would you ditch traditional meat for lab grown meat substitutes in fact, many say cultivated meat tastes like regular meat. Well, before you decide, I suggest that you take a look at this report. Look at this bowl of rice. 
Wondering what is this pink colored dish? Well, it's not your regular rice bowl. This is beef rice. South Korean researchers have succeeded in growing beef cells in rice grains. In other words, it's the first of its kind as it uses grain particles as the base for cultivating animal muscle and fat cells. Researchers believe it could become a sustainable alternative source of protein that can replace farming cattle for meat. So how does this work? Rice grains are first treated with enzymes to create an optimal environment for cell growth. The grains are then infused with cultivated bovine cells. The result is a pinkish beef rice that contains approximately 8% more protein and 7% more fat than conventional rice. The rice grains you see now have a uniform distribution of both muscle and fat cells throughout their surface and interior, paving the way for the development of future food sources. The most important question remains, how does it taste? In addition to a slightly beefy flavour and then followed by a taste of plant-based protein, there's also a subtle buttery creamy taste and furthermore, there's a slight dryness. In my personal experience, it has the characteristic of leaving a lingering aftertaste. Priced at $2 per kilogram, the cultured beef rice is believed to have the potential to compete with traditional beef products. However, the road ahead will be challenging. Why? Because it could be difficult to win over customers with the right flavour and texture. The South Korean researchers are not the first to try and bring lab-grown meat products to the table. Companies around the world are experimenting with cultivated meat. Various food startups are working to improve the taste, scalability and cost of lab-based meats. Cultured meat is seen as an environmentally friendlier alternative to livestock products. But the question remains, can new technologies persuade meat lovers to switch to lab-based alternatives? WhatsApp is experimenting with new features. Apple users are at risk. The week gone by was buzzing with a lot of exciting tech developments and we bring you the most important ones in a tech wrap. If you use an iPhone or an iPad, you have a reason to worry. New vulnerabilities have been spotted in the Apple devices. The Indian Computer Emergency Response Team, which is the country's nodal agency for cybersecurity related matters, has issued a high severity warning for iPhone and iPad users. The security agency points out that if vulnerabilities are exploited, hackers can gain control of the device and access sensitive information. The security flaw impacts certain iPhone models such as iPhone 8, iPhone 8 Plus and iPhone 10. Some of the iPad models are also at risk. Remember that you can take certain steps to protect your devices. Our advice is that always update your software, install security patches and enable two-factor authentication on your device. WhatsApp is experimenting with new features that can improve your messaging experience. It's reported that a new WhatsApp update will allow users to pin up to three messages at a time. The current version of the app allows users to pin only one message within the chat. The idea here is to let users highlight three messages such as important announcements or key reminders at the top of the chat interface for quick access. This will eliminate the need for having to scroll through the entire chat history to refer to something. WhatsApp is also planning to increase the limit of the number of chats that you can pin. Right now, users can pin only three conversations, but soon users will be able to pin five chats. The new features are currently limited to a specific set of beta users. They will be rolled out to a wider audience in the coming weeks. In India, the Uttar Pradesh police is planning to integrate AI into their investigation processes. AI is set to merge with law enforcement as the Uttar Pradesh police plans to include an AI tool called Crime GPT into its force. 
developed by Stack U Technologies in collaboration with the UP government and special task force, Crime GPT uses the power of advanced algorithms to speed up the processes, be it to identify or nab criminals. So how does the technology work? Crime GPT accesses a digital database of criminals. It allows police officers to search for specific information about individuals using written or spoken commands. It can recognize faces and voices and even analyze criminal networks. This innovative tool promises to revolutionize the landscape of law enforcement with its ability to deliver rapid and accurate results. The AI model can easily integrate with existing systems and can potentially emerge as a great asset in the battle against crime. Police in the Spanish city of Malaga are testing robot dogs to enforce traffic laws. Look at this robot dog in action during a test patrol. Some delighted bystanders even imitate its clinky clanky gait. Over the past two years, researchers from the University of Malaga designed the green and black robot to help police spot traffic violations. Such as the use of electric scooters in prohibited areas. It is remote controlled for now, but eventually it will be powered by AI so that it can work on its own. Apple is in talks with Google regarding its Gemini AI tool. The company aims to use Google's AI features in its iPhones. According to a Bloomberg report, the negotiations are about licensing Gemini for some new features coming to the iPhone software this year. It's reported that the terms of the agreement or how it would be implemented have not been decided. It is unlikely that any deal would be announced until June when Apple plans to hold its annual conference of developers. Well, that's all we have for you in this episode of Tech It Out. We will continue to bring you exciting inventions and updates on the latest gadgets. I will be back soon. Until then, keep watching Beyond World is One. And yes, don't forget to follow us on social media. For now, it's me, Ankit Uteja, signing off.